Everyone's heard of Star Wars, right? But have you ever heard of the Clone Wars? Unless you're a dedicated fan, it's something you might have heard of in name only, or even not at all. Star Wars is a franchise that's currently as big as it's ever been, but this also means a wider range of hits and misses to go with that increased output. I was one of the few people that was actually a fan of Last Jedi, but if either of the last two main trilogy films left a sour taste in your mouth, and you're still craving high quality Star Wars content, then the Clone Wars might be the antidote. The Mandalorian made a huge splash recently, when it surprised many fans, new and old, with its refreshing format. A lot of commentators called it the first Star Wars TV show, and although it is the first live-action canon program, I feel that this isn't entirely correct. The Clone Wars started in 2008, when Star Wars was still under George Lucas's ownership. At the helm as supervising director was absolute king Dave Filoni, who was earlier involved in the legendary Avatar yeah, The Last Airbender boy. on some episodes. It continued until 2013, when production was shelved prior to the sale of Star Wars to Disney. Earlier this year, much of the original team returned to release the seventh and final season. So let's get into 10 reasons why you should watch The Clone Wars. Reason number one, new locations, characters, and ships. The breadth and expanse of just what Clone Wars does with Star Wars is kind of astounding. There are too many characters to list, but some standouts include Captain Rex, Hondo, Ahsoka, Cad Bane, Asajj Ventress is a new Sith who has her own great arc. Mother tells in, Maul's return and rise to power as a crime lord is absolutely wild. A mixed bag of bounty hunters and Dooku and Grievous' repeated appearances. The worlds explored here are just such a rich melting pot of characters and those locations are just about as varied as the aliens. We see Star Wars staples such as water, desert, snow and jungle planets and a return to many favoured locations. But that's not even the craziest thing. We also get to see Yoda explore a kind of spirit force ancestral realm. We see Padawans collecting their lightsaber crystals from Ilum. There's a coven of force sensitive witches called the Night Sisters with their own religion and deep history. And Mortis, which is an ancient force anomaly location Anakin and Obi Wan stumble upon, presided over by ultra powerful force beings. Long have the ships in Star Wars been characters in their own right, and there are so many here both new and returning, including Y-Wings, V-Wings, Republic gunships that get an absolute hiding, the ATT, Venator, Star Destroyers, Jedi Starfighters, Big Boy, Tri-Droids, MTTs, Droid gunships, and plenty of bigger carriers and capital ships. It's epic to see many of these used in the more military and tactics-based storylines that the Clone Wars frequently explores. Reason number two, it does Anakin right. Look, Anakin in the prequels is not always great, to put it lightly. I still think the representation of a young Anakin in the Clone Wars is the best that we've gotten yet. In Revenge of the Sith, his fall seems too sudden, happening on a whim, and yet here we get an Anakin that has been written with gusto. Just the right combination of lovable goofball, reckless starfighter pilot, and sometimes edgy or slightly grumpy Jedi. Plus, the slow tinges or small hints of rage, dominance or aggression that slowly bleed through, as well as some visions of his unfortunate future, make his eventual turn to the dark side seem way more plausible and just straight out interesting. We're also treated to some hilarious and endearing chemistry between him and Obi-Wan that seems much more natural than a lot of the stuff that appeared in the prequels. The romance between him and Padme is much more lightly handled and way less ham-fisted than some classic I hate Sam moments. Reason number three, it does more justice to the prequel era than the prequels themselves. While the prequels gaining somewhat cult status and their profusion of memes has somewhat shifted the wider perception about them, I think The Clone Wars is the best and most fleshed out presentation of this era of the Star Wars universe. There's less cringy writing, loads of rich character development and jokes that are actually funny. It shows us the time that it and the prequels sit in with the Republic at the height of its power and a much shinier looking and less dingy galaxy and technology than in the OST era. Speaking of that, the politics here are actually handled rather well and with genuine intrigue, seeing as politics and war are two legs of the pedestal this series sits on and explores. There's some genuinely thoughtful explorations of these two themes over a number of arcs. It's certainly not the numbing snooze fest the prequels induced any time they vaguely mention politics. Number four, Ahsoka. It could be argued that if the original trilogy is Luke's, 
and the prequel trilogy Anakin's, then this series is Ahsoka's. She is without a doubt one of the most well-developed female characters in Star Wars. Her arc that moves from young Padawan training at Anakin's side to fully-fledged commander leading troops into battle is incredibly handled. We see her gaining more independence as her experience grows. Her dynamic with both Anakin and Rex is fantastic, with plenty of genuinely wholesome moments. Of course, there's plenty of receipts of internet neckbeards hating her when she first appeared, a reaction all too common to certain characters in recent years, but she's managed to push through the bile and become one of the most loved characters in Star Wars canon and an absolute cosplay favourite. Reason number five, it actually gives the clones varied character, or any character at all. The thing with the clones in the prequels is that they were just sort of there as a faceless, nameless clones. The Clone Wars handles them incredibly differently by actually giving them names and backstory and emotions and all sorts. It suggests that once they are cloned, their own varying experiences and influences shape their character. They're some of the most well-developed characters in Clone Wars and become people you actually want to vouch for. Just look to Captain Rex, an absolute standout throughout the entire series, or the Bad Batch storyline in the final season, amongst many others. The Fives storyline is one of the most tragic throughout the whole show. The military camaraderie and shindigs between the clones also add an air you don't normally see in Star Wars, and they get some of the best comedic lines. 6. Maul ain't dead. Spoiler alert to almost no one who hasn't heard about this, especially if you saw the cameo in Solo. But Darth Maul makes his return in Clone Wars with a pair of robot mecha legs. So Maul was one of the sole cool parts about The Phantom Menace, apart from now this is pod racing, of course. But he got virtually zero lines apart from a number of grunts. Here, his character is redeemed with one of the best Star Wars arcs in history, developed by Dave Filoni, um, genuinely well written. It follows his recuperation and unending spite for Kenobi for nearly killing him, and eventual rise to being Lord of the Underworld and involved with paramilitary terrorist group Death Watch. His playoff as a free radical third party between the Jedi and, at the time, still mysterious Darth Sidious creates some tense interplay and interesting situations. His play here makes the cameo in Solo make far more sense and emphasises how the short form series do have an impact in the feature length films. He's without a doubt one of the most compelling characters and stories in Clone Wars. 7. Obi-Wan and his one-liners. Obi-Wan's always been something of a fan favourite, even since his original appearance in A New Hope. Obi-Wan has regained something of kingly status in recent years, thanks again to the memes. His interactions here with Anakin feel far more natural than in the prequels, and he acts as the perfect foil to Anakin's hot-headedness. The bond they form while going on countless adventures feels genuine, so that one could say they were indeed like brothers. He even gets a love interest in Duchess Satine from Mandalore, and a lot of the arcs involving her and Mandalore are some of the best in the series. Also, if you want to see a bald Obi-Wan take a face-changing serum to transform himself into disguise, uh, that's in here too. Plus, Obi-Wan puts out some of the most genuinely hilarious one-liners in the series, such as this one. Number eight, the sheer quantity of it. While quantity, of course, does not equal quality, here it still means you're going to get some top-notch episodes and arcs. This would also vary to personal taste. I reckon there's a Clone Wars arc to suit just about everyone. We have 133 episodes, which means that we have a lot of time. 2,926 minutes to be exact. That's approximately 24 full-length movies worth of runtime to explore the galaxy of Star Wars with, which means there's plenty of time to really sit in and get comfortable with the world, go deep, really, really develop things, and go to places you might not expect from this franchise. 9. Insane action and lightsaber fights. The sequel trilogy has a bunch of heavy-hitting medieval-style combat, and the original trilogy was a bit more fluid and free-moving. But if you want to see insane Jedi flips, inventive uses of force powers, and jumping huge distances to take down massive combat droids, then Clone Wars is your series. The animated format means the creators are able to get away 
with big set pieces and surprisingly large scale and high impact battles that rival and in some cases even exceed what you might see in the mainline films. 10. It explores subgenres you normally wouldn't see in Star Wars. This series uses subgenres you probably wouldn't expect from the Star Wars franchise. Pretty much everything is in there. The action adventure to be expected for sure, but as well as heists, romance, coming of age stories, political intrigues, mysteries, tragedies, and even some police procedurals. Dave Filoni always has a thing with doing a Seven Samurai inspired episode as well. It's really cool to see how these genres express themselves when put through the stylistic blender of the Star Wars universe. To put it simply, this series is bloody brilliant. In my opinion, it's one of the best pieces of Star Wars media out there. Of course, this quality is going to vary wildly over seven seasons and a hefty 133 episodes. Some are stinkers, but overall, plenty of absolutely cracking arcs. There's heaps that I know that I've missed out on here, but if I mentioned everything I loved about this show, this would be a two hour long video and nobody's got time for that. If you're looking for more Star Wars content to explore and dive deeper into after hitting up The Mandalorian, I think this is your absolute best bet. A uh, chef's kiss from me.